Hello everyone and welcome to Analyze the Dawn. I'm your host Dominic and we are on to some exhibition replays. We have Super Sexy D versus Captain Upbar as the first match for today on Adansonia, which is one of those maps that we see a lot of, has a lot of ducks. A lot of people go for Amphib on this map. So let's see more of that. Amphib it is. Captain Upbar going for Cloaky Buff Factor. That's not Amphib. And spiders. Okay, no one likes Amphib anymore. All right, Amphib meta is over. <laughs> No, seriously, this actually isn't... This is going to be interesting. Because Cloakybot, as a rule, has a bit of an advantage over spiders early, early on. Just because glaives are effectively riot units against fleas. But at the same time, it's, it is a little bit tricky to get through Venoms. I'm curious to see how this is actually going to play out then. Because you have the Venom red back as a way of getting through the bandit... Or through the glaives. But that's also a much slower army than the glaives. So I expect Super Sexy D is going to be a fair bit more defensive than they will anything else. And the D stands for defense. Super sexy defense. Which we'll be having to see plenty of if they want to manage to survive this glaive wave, since that is going to be a problem. There's already 10 glaives on the field. These fleas coming around the back are going to have a bit of a tough time, and also, Captain Upper actually will have a bit of a tough time going forward. This is a cheese strat. No doubt about it, this is definitely a cheese strat. Captain Upbar's economy is so far behind Super Sexy D's that it's just a matter of these glaives. These glaives have to find something. And against spiders, that actually is an option. There's nothing but the commander, and the commander against 10 glaives is not going to last. And the fleas, again, they are effectively going to be running into a riot unit squad. I'm honestly surprised Super Sexy D is not building up Venom Redback, because that would, that would win. Like, two Venoms, two Redbacks, that have no problem against this army of glaives. But all of these fleas are going to accomplish nothing. So that's going to be a problem. Is that, I mean, Captain Nutbar, now they get another economy up, they are managing to get a little bit more metal. Not much, but something. So that's the thing. They're going to have to be able to get in here, deal the damage. There's the first glaive, managing to get rid of several fleas before going down themselves. But Super Sexy D building up that Lotus, not in the best of positions, mind you. There is another one further up. That, that will be enough. And the commander in position, the commander is almost fully upgraded. Once it gets that, it'll probably be a machine gun upgrade, and that should be enough to stop the glaives. Captain Nutbar's cheese has been spoiled. Super Sexy D instead going for the flamethrower. Not a bad option either. Not a typical option, but not a terrible one. But yeah, that is that is Captain Nutbar's cheese. They still managed to expand behind that, so they're not completely out of the... They, it's, it's just that Super Sexy D is not completely out of the woods yet, but... Having lost all those forces, Captain Nutbar will have a bit of a tougher time actually doing much damage. Super Sexy D, on the other hand, can push back, and it will take a little while for Captain Nutbar to rebuild. In fact, Super Sexy D could theoretically attack now with the fleas that are in the back line. They are going for it, though. Captain Nutbar instead throwing away the last of their glaives instead of handling it as a containment or a scout, just instead feeding it as metal to Super Sexy D. Because Captain Nutbar is nice like that. With that, though, Super Sexy D not really building up a whole lot of forces. I would expect some Venom Redback setup, or possibly Th or Hermit, but I don't see any of that. Which is rather surprising. You'd expect Super Sexy D would actually want to go for a counterattack, or at the very least, make sure that they're not going to be hit by another attack if Captain Nutbar would expand behind what they had attacked with, and then use that to build up an actual meaningfully useful economy, and then from there actually build up another army and attack again. But nope, Super Sexy D figures that is not going to happen. Instead, figures that's just worth expanding. I mean, I don't disagree. That is a thing to bear in mind. Captain Upbar did burn their entire opening economy, and Super Sexy D does know that Captain Upbar didn't have metal extractors at first, so they're probably figuring Captain Upbar is not sending another army in. And, you know, they'd be right. That is true. I mean, it could have gone another way, but yes, that is right. There is no other army coming in right now. I'm just kind of surprised that Super Sexy D is not preparing for later fights. Like, just getting up units that are more useful militarily for the Spiderbot factory, not just building fleas all everywhere. I'm surprised, not disappointed though. I'm actually rather intrigued. This is this seems to be working out reasonably well for them. I mean, as much as it is a little bit odd and a little bit unusual to just go mass flee as spider, it doesn't seem to be doing them much harm. In fact, now that they have this giant scouting line, they've got full knowledge of what's going on here. They've actually, like, and nothing can come across the map that Captain Nutbar can actually sneak by. Like, there's nowhere they can sneak by. Super Sexy has full knowledge of basically every single piece of terrain in between them and Captain Nutbar. Like, there's nothing that Captain Nutbar can do other than attack the fleas. And that's fine, because the Spiderbot factory is all about scouting. It's all about knowing exactly what your opponent's up to. And if you lose some fleas in the process, that's fine. You just know that that's where your opponent has recently been. And if you're playing close enough attention, then it's not even a big deal. And especially with all these fleas now attacking everywhere, 
Super Sexy D is really making this mass flea work. Just setting it up to contain. That's the biggest thing you want to do with these. Just get as much containment as possible. You can't really fight straightforwardly. As we see, these fleas right now are being completely destroyed by the one glaive. But you can at least use it to pressure against workers and harass a little bit. You can't, again, this set of fleas is gonna face massive losses. They might be able to attack and deal some damage. I'm not sure. I'm not confident. But there apparently are enough of them. 20 fleas are enough to break through a base and start dealing some damage and lose all of them, but still deal some damage in the meantime. And then one flea left. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I mean, it'll die killing the metal extractor. That's the thing. Remember, metal extractors are like 80 damage explosion in a close enough range that fleas have a difficult time avoiding getting hit by it. So yeah, this flea is actually gonna die when it kills the metal extractor. If it kills the metal extractor. If it doesn't die sooner. Again, that's kind of the downside of using a lot of fleas. They do not survive very long. Death explosions will finish them. But hey, it's kind of a neat little strategy. Just to throw that in there. Oh, hey, it's front of point. Never mind. It did survive. It only took a bit of the damage. But the point is, though, that Captain Nutbar is way behind economically, and Super Sexy D can win with Mass Flea, because why the heck not? I don't know what's here. Oh, yeah, actually, people are wondering about Captain Nutbar's Red Star. I have no idea. I mean, considering the way that the game is going right now, I think the game is kind of answering the question of why did they have a Red Star. I feel like it'd be mean to elaborate too much, but it's like, yeah, the, the mass flea's coming in here, and it's causing problems, and they went for a massive cheese strat at the start. Uh, that doesn't seem like... They, I can kind of see, maybe they are just playing a lot of co-op and chickens. I'm not sure. They've been playing for a long time. I'm very familiar with the name. I just haven't seen them play much recently, especially 1v1s. And it's a different skill set to play teams as 1v1s. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're a big teams player. I think they are a big teams player, actually. And I wouldn't be surprised if they went for air, or went for like, cheesy strats, or whatever... Just to try to win that way. Because that often happens in big team games. You have one or two players that are going for really silly strats. And then build up from there. And that doesn't translate to 1v1 at all. As you can see, Captain Nutbar is winning with fleas. I have never seen anyone use fleas this numerously. Not even effectively. I mean, it's just a matter of numbers. You get enough of them and you can punch through most things. Unless, you know, a Stardust is up. Or a Warrior. Or even a 2 or 3 Glaive army. But no, fleas. Fleas won the game. How does Fleas... Super Sexy D built nothing but Fleas and a couple of Weavers. I mean, I have never seen that work, but it worked. So, good thinking Super Sexy D, you did not build any more than you had to in order to win. I just, yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens when you just realize you're, what your opponent's up to, what your opponent has, and what they can deal with, and you don't push much more than you have to. Good job, Super Sexy D. And we get to see Fleas being remarkably effective. Alright, well, anyway, that was that. The next match will be a little more even. Not players I've seen before, but players that are apparently rated reasonably well. And clearly have some experience. So it's going to be Halberall, Halberall Red versus Sack Roger on Eye of Horus. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.